What is going on guys? It's Real Touch Gmail here back with another video and today I want to do something a little bit different, right? Instead of a tutorial where I show you line by line how to write something out, I kind of want to give you guys a mindset on what to think of so you don't need tutorials that show you line by line. You can actually develop and think of how you would go about doing something all on your own. So right now I'm in the development of my own game and in my own game, I wanted a completely generated sort of dungeon world for a top-down view, right? So today, I'm going to bring you through my mindset and kind of the process of me going through this. Right here, I can show you the final result of that process. And uh, if you like what you see, then stick around. I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so the vision I had for this game was pretty simple with the world generation. Basically, what I wanted to do was have a section of four different rooms like this and a two by two grid that were all linked together just like this so that the player could go around in basically a square, right? But now how does it get bigger from here? We create another two by two square, a grid, either below it, to the left of it, to the right of it, or on top of it, and we transition in a pathway so you can get to the next area. Do this so many times and you get a really cool, unique looking world and I've even gone up to 70 80 rooms and it's pretty crazy if you play it through in game it take it will take you about 20 25 minutes to actually get through the entire thing which is really cool so to get an effect like this the first thing that needs to happen is well the first thing I did was for every room that actually exists I want to be random, but not in the sense that it's randomly generated, like you can get like a different sort of world every time. Each room is different, but they're generated by me. So every room is hand uh, handmade. So if we go into my game here, for each room in the game is actually a sprite. And this sprite here, it, it, very easy to make. I could add walls. I could do whatever I want using red. And I've got three of these created. So I go over the next one here and right there. So what I do is I use a script to read the color codes of these images. And with that color code, I can then create blocks in the specified areas. So for these red blocks, that would be the actual blocks in the game. The green blocks would be enemies, the yellow blocks chests, and so on. So this makes it really easy to hand make your levels. So the, the script is pretty simple. What we do is we draw the sprite, we put it through a for loop so it reads every pixel in the image. So our image for the room is 32 pixels in width and 18 pixels high. So we read every pixel, we get the hex code for that color, and then based on the hex code, we can add tiles, add objects, add anything we'd like, and then clear out the image and you have yourself a completely built room using a picture. For example, this room here is an image in its own. This one's different. This one, this one. And then you come over to here, here's a chest. Here's a cool little uh, room here. And you have these two squares here. And if we go into our bottom right corner, you can see that exact image is right there. So in theory, this sounds awesome, right? You can create these little sections or rooms and put them anywhere you'd like in the world. It sounds great. The only problem with this system is that it's incredibly slow, very, very slow to load these pictures, go through, check each uh, hex value, and 
create the blocks accordingly. So you're talking five rooms, it would take you one to two minutes to actually load up those rooms, which is crazy because five rooms is not very big. So the way I got around this was I took out loading completely. I I no loading. What I did was I created another script that basically loaded up the file for me so I can uh, load up the file and in a show debug message I wrote out the code that I needed so that I can compile the level I can load it completely out in my console I can see the code that's needed to create that level and then put it into a script which I've done right here so I can go ahead and show you this real quick here is my console for game maker studio and if I go to compile level here and let's say I want to compile the bottom entrance right I would run the game and as you see right here it's generating all the code I need for that room so now I can take this copy that completely put it into a script and I've now eliminated the loading process for these rooms So now I can create these sections of rooms, I can load them up, I have everything stored, but how do I transition one section to another? And this was a big challenge for me. I had never done something like this before on this scale. So I really had to think about how I wanted to go about doing this. And I actually rewrote the entire system for it three times. But at the end, I found something that worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I did. So in my script here, I have a create world script and this right here will create that entire world uh, completely random so what I wanted to do was first things first create a script that shows me the coordinates for each section because the problem you'll have with this system is here I'll show you real quick if you start here and let's say you know you have your first area here and then the system goes to the right and has another system or another area created and let's say it goes down so anybody can really do this right it's it's pretty simple but what if your code wanted to go back up overlapping what you already have here which is not good or what if it wanted to go to the left go like that and then go back up again in a square and you're now overlapping this section so you don't want anything overlapping it needs to snake it needs to go around and if it doesn't have a path then it needs to it needs to let you know that it doesn't have a path so how I did this was I set up each areas X value and Y value and where it started the path in an array so we have here um, a starting X a starting Y a real X and a real Y variable which is basically where you're starting and these real X real Y variables are what it's creating the area on so what we're doing here is we're creating a for loop through how many areas I want and through this, I'm setting our xx i variable from our for loop as our real x and our real y. And here, I'm basically just taking a direction value, which I am also putting into an array right here. So direction i equals choose 1, negative 1, 2, or negative 2. So 1 is one would mean the area is going to the right, negative 1 the left, negative 2 down, 2 is up. So what I do here is I check the direction. If the direction is going horizontally, 
I do another for loop to check through all of our other, our previous XX and YY values in the array to make sure that it's not already taken. And if it is already taken, used through this code here, it will say area collided breaking in my debug. It will subtract the I, so the for loop will not have mattered, and it will break off the for loop and basically try again. If these coordinates are free, can create equals true, and can create will then set everything up into our variable list here, our, and then we just add up to our real x. I then do the same thing with our vertical movements. So if it's going to the left, or, or I'm sorry, if it's going up or down, we go through the for loop, we check if if where we're going to place it, coordinates are available. If they are, can create equals true, and there we go. And if it, if it loops through everything and nothing is taken, like say on the first go at it, then uh, like the first area that's created, if it loops through and nothing is created, then we just set can create equal true. Just because that, you know, we didn't, we didn't collide with anything. So then what I do is actually creating the world is another challenge in itself. And here I need to create an empty chunk, which is another script, which basically just takes just takes all of my right entrance, left entrance, top, top left levels, etc., and puts them in a two by two grid. So like I had shown you before with the PNG file that I was creating, I put that into a script and then I can create it accordingly. So with this one here, our open E is our entrance type. So it has two entrance types when it creates a chunk to create two transitions. The transitions I'm talking about, I will show you right now. So this would be an entrance type right here, and this would be an entrance type right here. Basically the two pathways that transition to areas. So this would be one right here, and this would be one. So if our entrance type is on the bottom left, that's coordinated with a number. So either that be one, five, and bottom left entrance type going towards the left is going to be six. So this right here had the index of six and here's our bottom right going vertically down, which would be our second type, which is our open E2 variable. And going to the right down would be uh, four. And then basically if it doesn't, if, if it's not four, it's not eight, and our first one isn't four or eight, then we're just going to create a normal bottom right level, which does not have an entrance type or anything, which is basically like this room here. And that's basically it. That's how I've done it, and it's really cool. So real quick, I'm gonna load up 50 rooms here and uh, let you guys take a look.